Yay. Hey, Karina. Hi, Varda. Yes. Oh. Hi. So this is a great group. Well, a very warm welcome to uh, all who are present at this meeting of uh, conversational intelligence and about the book. And we aim to make this call informal and fun. And there's someone coming in now. Yeah, so Tim sees me, people still coming in, but uh, let's uh, just start. Why are we here today? And um, we, we have formed a group, so perhaps you have noticed that some people know each other already, and we have formed a group. And uh, we believe, that group believes that we can change the world by conversations. So in June, three years ago, we all had the same mentor and her name was Judith E. Glazer. And just people are coming in and there are some people of the group, but Judith E. Glazer, she wrote a book. And I have the book here, if you can see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a bit fake. Can you see it? Yeah, yes. it's uh, called Conversational Intelligence. And um, yeah, we all apply the framework of conversational intelligence in our work. So for those who not, do not know that, it's that book that uh, is very much recommended of that framework. But we know each other from another book. And that will come, that is this book. Yeah, Uta, you, you have clear. And the title of that book is Changing Conversations in a Changing World. So there are some authors of the book here in this session. Perhaps you can raise your hand. Who is, who is in the book with the chapter? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so the book is divided in chapters. And what we did is that each month uh, we have uh, a webinar where the author presents its chapter. And today it's Karen Ovari's turn. So great day, Karen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Karen is the author uh, of today's uh, regular table. And uh, Ute, perhaps Ute, you can raise your hand. Ute is the tech host of this webinar. So she will take care for all the techie stuff. And she's great at doing that. So she will divide us into breakout rooms and uh, some other things that you will experience. So this session is recorded. So you can look at it afterwards as well on the website of uh, CIQ. And um, yeah, if you like, we can put the uh, link to the website in the chat later on. And it is really great to see so many people here. So there are many colleagues from um, Judith uh, from Conversational Intell Intelligence. Perhaps you can raise just your hand to see who's whom a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> one, two, three. So yeah, it's about two thirds. Yeah, and one third is guests. Some guests are hidden behind their um, uh, screen and um, perhaps you choose not to show your face. It would be nice if you did though. Hello, Anna. Welcome. And uh, it's, it's so happy. And we are so happy to see so many, uh, so many people. So let's kick off. And uh, we will do that with a trailer that uh, has been made, uh, well, I think more than a year ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, let me, let me try to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen, and I'm the author of Chapter 9, How Trust Makes for a Safer World. I have over 18 years of experience in living in different parts of the world and working in the front line of high reliability organisations, such as oil and gas, nuclear, transport, aviation, railways, fast railways, etc. And during my time, particularly in the front line, uh, you know, people need to be safe and to be safe they need to feel trust in their organization and in their teams and their team members that they can actually say, whoa, I messed up, you know, I want to put up my hand. So we need to create an environment that needs helps people to be psychologically safe. Having the right conversation helps build trust. And that's what this chapter is all about is how do we appreciate what trust is so that we can go forward and have a safer world. Yeah, thanks, Ute. Getting used to that tung tung. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so Karen, that was more than a year ago. Eh? And for, for all of us, so much has happened eh? since then. Eh? We all faced COVID and so many changes. And so please, could you tell what, what, what would you like to add to that trailer? Eh? Because a lot has happened since then. Really interesting. Um, and, and actually even listening to that trailer um, and watching my funny faces. But anyway, um, it, it, was, it was a lovely... It was actually lovely to watch it, I must admit, because um, I think yeah. we've created something incredibly special with this book. And uh, so I feel quite grateful to be one of those authors. What's changed for me during this past year is I guess now I actually have a business that's dedicated to. So now where I was consulting, I now have a business. So I've started a new business around this called Safety Collaborations, which actually takes, thank you, COVID, the digital space that we're in now and all of the knowledge and the learning that we had before that and try to amplify that all into a global space where people can walk through culture change around safety. Um, and of course, there's many benefits to working this way and delivering that way. And some of them are inclusion, diversity, better, uh, you know, allowing room for people who are quiet to speak up because through typing, through digital facilitation, it's cost effective, it's flexible, uh, no travel issues, of course. That's not to say that we don't want to see people in person again. We will, you know, at the right time and when it's appropriate. And in fact, that will probably be the basis for the chapter of our second book that's coming up for all of you who are waiting for that one um, that is coming up. So watch this space. So I guess what's changed for me really nothing. I think the I think trust has actually become even more important, regardless of the space. You know, we made a lot of assumptions that when we're in person and next to each other, that there's some implied trust with that. But if we're working in in this realm, then how do you build that trust? So even though the chapter isn't so much about working digitally, um, I think the, the word trust is such an important component to uh, what we do today and how we get through every day today. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Karen. Eh? We are all in that uh, digital uh, shift. Eh? And talking yeah. about trust, I just uh, for some people who came in want to show that book again. Eh? It's uh, it's it's yeah. We as a as a CRQ European collective, eh? that is an association of uh, CRQ certified coaches. And the subtitle of that book is how great leaders build trust and get extraordinary results. So it's all on the topic of uh, of trust and. Uh, yeah, we believe that trust can be built in conversations. So who we are, is already told, and many of here, and what we do is that we all focus on organizational change and transformation. And by sharing ideas and insights, we enable and inspire personal and professional uh, growth. Karen, you didn't yet tell about your specialty in your company. Perhaps uh, you can add a little bit on that. Uh, well, I, we've... <laughs> There's, there's me and two others. One of the others is here, actually, <laughs> down there in the background. <laughs> uh, so Nola is with us. And what we specialize in is actually delivering global safety culture change. So when I say global, it's more that we deliver it worldwide. And we have spent many years traveling around the globe doing safety leadership programs, helping people, helping frontline leaders to have better communication, to, um, to get the job done safely first time rather than three times later, you know, which yeah. also has many consequences, A, to physical well-being, but also sometimes environmental or the financial to the business. So speaking with companies around how do they implement their safety culture, which is about mindset, it's about, uh, yeah, well, building that trust so that people yeah. can actually speak up. And psychological safety is a very important component to this as well. Yeah. Not so much of a topic for today, but one that we also talk a lot about. Um, yeah. And particularly you and me, Sonia, we talk about that one quite a bit. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. so we work yeah. with these high, what we call high reliability organizations, and they are they're basically high hazard industries. So as you heard in the trailer, you know, we spent a lot of our time on oil rigs. I mean, my first job was in this space was nearly 20 years ago. And I'd flown from Australia all the way to Nigeria to go and work on an oil rig for six weeks over Christmas. I think that was my qualification, by the way, that I could be at sea for six weeks 
Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I had to learn very, very fast yeah. the language that they spoke. And that was really important. And if you think about conversational intelligence and what we bring into this, how do you build rapport? How do you prime for trust? It's about understanding the lingo or the language of the environment that you're in. Uh, yeah. So I had to learn that very quickly because prior to that, I was in the IT world. So yeah. nothing to do with the oil and gas. Yes. Yeah. A little bit about the world eh, of your client groups on the first page of your chapter, eh, which is chapter nine of the book. Eh, you, yeah. you say, well, you work with HROs. The first time when I, I read the book, I thought HROs. Well, I know HPOs, high performing organizations, but there seem to be high re reliability organizations as well yeah. what what is that it means that safety is at the core of operations so if you think mm. uh, you know oil and gas they're drilling they're using high hazard operations so a lot mm. of their operations are uh, you know really very dangerous so mm. how do we have how do they stay safe you think about hospitals the medical centers you know you think of what doctors and nurses do particularly doctors and surgery right? mm. it's high reliability on having safety at the core of what it does same with a nuclear plant or an airplane yeah. right so all of these organizations where safety is at the heart of what they do right? yeah okay Thank you to 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 make that understanding better. Eh? So so in in your uh, chapter you introduce uh, two models and 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 one is mm -hmm. uh, what you call the H Hudson safety letter. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's 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 an Australian, isn't it, Hudson? Uh well, actually, sure, if he was, yeah, yeah I think he yeah. might be actually. Come yeah. to think of it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, he might be, yeah. <laughs> good point. Yeah. What, and, and the link yeah. bed, in case anybody doesn't realize, I am, even though I live in Scotland, I am Australian, yeah. So, yes, um, yeah. uh, so well, yeah. what, what is it all I, about? Well, let me share, I'm going to share the screen and I will show you the, the basics of that model, and again using oops i think i just no i got the right one have i got the right one my friends yes i have so what can you see at the moment so i'm not sure what i yeah, can see. yeah we can see the maturity level safety code oh, maturity fantastic level. okay Five right, levels. Fantastic. yeah so hudson when and there are many iterations of this model and interestingly enough today i've been working with an organization we actually have six layers to this ladder so companies have taken this core model and they have um you know modified it to suit their language and their speak and the, how they want it to be perceived but essentially what it's saying that an organization goes through this maturity levels and at the pathological level, we, it's where the business drivers are seen as more, more important than safety. So that's the premise, the underlying premise of this. And so they will only do enough to not get caught because there is a lot of um, uh, legal restrict. Uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, Jurisdiction. Legal, yeah, there's lots of jurisdiction around safety. You know, there's lots of. Um, advocacies around safety so there's a lot of legal binding with all of this so at that pathological level it's really where companies are just well we'll just do what we need to get away with basically if you're not looking we'll do whatever we mm. like yeah so that reactive is then is a little bit more around okay we have incidents and we see a lot of this actually we have the pendulum swing so we focus on productivity we then have an incident and, and they focus all on safety and it's all about oh we've got to you know we react to everything right mm. and then they kind of forget about that then they fall into their normalization into their rhythms and their routines and they fall a little bit back into that reactive so they never really it's not embodied let me say into the mm. into the system and as we move up into the calculative we then start to say well we need to do a little bit more um so it's about collecting data it's about lagging indicators so lagging indicators is looking at the historical data and so they're basing their safety performance on historical data rather than 
well, what about the future? So it's all very much going on from behind. And then when we go into the proactive, it's now we start shifting from a more compliance-based environment to one that's a little bit more, in, I'm going to use the word embodied actually, but where the conversations become more interesting. So we're now being proactive. So we actively start seeking, uh, we might measure things like near misses. So nobody actually got hurt, but we want to capture those near misses to stop it from happening. We start to look more at how do we lead people? How do we manage teams? Mm. And moving to generative, that generative organization is actually what they say is, it's how we do business around here, but it's also about we welcome uncomfortable news mm. because it's in being able to welcome uncomfortable news means that we can, be, um, we can solve problems into the future. Mm -hmm. yeah so that's yeah. really the ladder as it is and really you could apply it to most organizations to be fair yeah mm -hmm. um, there's yeah. nothing yeah. and to COVID as well eh? <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah. yes you know yeah so so um you it, it is a ladder it seems that we have to go up the ladder well the what we'll do at this point is you know, how do we move companies up the ladder? And that's where it gets really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I was to just before showing the next slide, ask people to put up, you know, maybe into the chat or something, although we're going to put you into a breakout session. Um, what, you know, what do you think it would take to move up that ladder? So what yeah. do you think yeah. people need to do to move up that ladder? Yeah. So... The question is clear, eh? what does it take to move up the ladder? And we will now be divided in uh, breakout rooms yeah, of three persons. And uh, we, you will be there three for five, the three of you for five minutes. And the breakout mm -hmm. rooms are not recorded. So please share your experiences eh, in your teams or your organization. So what would it take yeah, to move up the ladder? And here I ask Ute to just bring us to the rooms okay do do they need the image of the letter or can they do it without what will you say uh, i'll put the letter actually yeah i can share to the rooms can't i these days i, I can i can drop it also here in, in in the chat box if you like so no problem i don't think we can see the chat box in me in the room so maybe we must just take a picture yeah so yeah that's a good idea I put it yep. in the chat so you can download it and I will also now open the breakout rooms. Um, mm -hmm. If I mean, we don't join the room. So if you get an invitation, just ignore it. Um, and we will keep an eye so that nobody is alone. Yeah. Have fun. Five minutes. Okay, we'll five minutes. Back. So, I'm, I'm out. Uh, I'm out. I'm out now. <laughs> well, you're, you're here. Uh, okay, okay. I was in the middle of a of, of, of a story, but that's that's uh, five minutes that's... up. I uh, think. <laughs> it, you know, nothing I've experienced is whether if a, if a breakout room is five minutes, it's too short. If it's twenty minutes, it's too short. It's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah, they're always yeah. too short. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's 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 a rule of the suitcase. Doesn't matter how big it is, it's always full. Ex Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. But we oh, had yeah. an interesting uh, conversation in the in the group, and uh, mm -hmm. so perhaps we can share some um, some some observations in the chat eh, as well, eh, because uh, we managed that uh, all the three talked in the five minutes, mm -hmm. but and there were three very different conversations uh, also. So it was Lynn and Pelle and um, Karina in the group. Is it possible for you to share your your main observations in the chat? Yeah, and also for the others, of course. Eh? Or you can have it just verbally. Or yeah, hear the voice as well. Yeah, it's always nice. Perhaps, Pelham, because we so brutally uh, interrupted, eh? you were sharing <laughs> your experience in aviation and the just culture. Culture, I never heard about uh -huh. it. Yeah, Perhaps you can summarize. Uh, Seems that Pelle is not in. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean. Okay. Yes, yeah, I, I was waiting <laughs> for permission to speak. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please go on. Permission, yeah, yeah. permission granted. 
<laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And we were talking about uh, uh, everybody was giving feedback, and uh, my uh, experience. Uh, I, I'm my background is from aviation, and mm -hmm. uh, we work with uh, Just Culture. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you heard of it, but. I uh, yeah, you have. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I explained what the just culture was. Uh, so, um, uh, it's it's about uh, sharing information, learning from each other, um, without uh, uh, being punished when you make mistakes, uh, have incidents, uh, except when you do it on purpose, of course, and you have to take your responsibilities. But uh, mm -hmm. the main purpose is to learn from each other, uh, from each other's mistakes. And the way we do that is on one hand, uh, we, we share the information digitally and also with a magazine monthly. So all incidents and all information uh, is shared with the whole company. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have a matrix system we use that all information is shared in that uh, in that uh, matrix, uh, and uh, it's like uh, uh, calculating the risks of uh, of all kind of incidents, and then it calculates. Okay, on this subject, we have to train. We have to talk more about this. Uh, there must be an e-learning or whatever, uh, because uh, we have too much, too many incidents. Uh, so mm -hmm. the whole company has uh, benefited from from it. If we uh, do some training, so that's mm. uh, that's yeah. about it. Yeah, thanks so much uh, for relating this to to uh, learning, and we are going to talk about risk uh, management later on. Uh, perhaps we have time for one more voice. Who would like yes. to share? Could be ideas on what it takes to move up that ladder. Um, I've just got a very simple one. Oh, are mm -hmm. you talking? Oh, yeah, oh, you're welcome, Karina. Yeah. yeah go. No, no, just in terms of teams, I find one of the bases to start with is to have a shared purpose for the team mm -hmm. um, so that they can at least start seeing themselves as a whole. And Lynn mentioned psychological safety um, mm -hmm. and trust. But as long as you see yourselves as individuals, so I do we. Um, you know, the trust and, and the, you can't move up that ladder. Mm. So those are the basics that I thought of. Yeah, thanks so much. And there are so many more, but yeah, our program is full. So we will continue, perhaps come back to some others later on. Because, because what we are going to do, we are going back to the book and read a passage in the book. And for those who have the book, it is on page 110. Mm -hmm. And Karen is going to read from her own oeuvre. <laughs> I will. It's a very interesting reading from your own chapter, even though you write it, you need yeah. to read it. Um, but I just going to share uh, ah. this very quickly. Um, I think what, you know, Pele and what everybody has said is that what you need to move up that ladder is yeah. to be increasingly informed and yeah. to increase trust and accountability, which I think is exactly what both... Karina yeah. and, and uh, Pele were saying so yeah. you know and yeah. and of course shared purpose I saw in the chat as well and and the that moment of it's okay to speak up without you know without it's an okay to be vulnerable without being punished basically mm -hmm. and uh, that's a you know very hard for many people to get to yeah so thinking about that so I'll stop that share for the minute so what I wrote a little bit about this was that, you know, so if we think about a generative safety culture, it's, it's how we do business around here and with the perception that safety is part of the organization's DNA. And our company, uh, Safety Collaborations, our tagline, if you like, is making safety part of your DNA. With all areas of the business benefiting, often these organizations are characterized by a state of chronic unease to ward off complacency. So, but and many organizations sit between, sit between levels two and three, with many moving to level four. However, very few are at level five. To become a truly generative organization, it has to have the aspiration and skills to get there. 
Once all the box ticking exercises referring to levels two and three in particular are complete, the only way to move forward is to deepen trust. So the focus of this chapter is on that more is more on the complicated human emotion of trust. And we don't, I'm not sure we always talk about it as an emotion, but it is. And understanding what conversations will, will get you there. So one might say it lies in the degrees of trust. Trust to speak up, trust that my team and manager have my back, trust that my team and manager can trust me, and that our systems will work. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot to that. Yeah. yeah, sure. This is really interesting eh, to um, to have a closer look at uh, trust eh, as a as a dimension of emotions. Eh, uh, Bella um, had the example of uh, uh, incident management. Others talk about having shared goals, eh, but a dimension of emotions you don't hear so often uh, in organizations. Is where where I come, they don't talk in those terms and uh, you write that it is in many ways it is our best uh, built in risk assessment eh? yes. that uh, in our body and it was so surprised because when when reading this i realized myself that when we we we, we work in organizations often when you talk about risk assessment yeah people are thinking about financial topics and uh, activities and not about this uh, side of of trust eh? No, that's yeah. true. So, so talk, yeah. yeah, continue. Yeah. yeah, it really made me think. So, what, what, what kind of conversation that we, would we need to build that aspect of uh, of trust? Before we'll talk a little bit about trust, I'm going to the other thing that I do when I work with when we work with organisations is that the, often when we start in a program of how do we build a trust culture, if you like for the want of a new word, um, right? Uh, yeah. First of all, I think what's something that's often missing is we, we need to assess the mood first. Mm. So I'll come back to the trust as, an inbuilt, as our inbuilt risk assessment, because even before we go to that, we need to start having the right conversations. But to have those conversations, you know, if the mood of the organisation or the mood of the team or the group is not in the right place, then when is it going to be the right conversation? There's no point mm. about talking about trust because it's not there in the first place, yeah? And that became really apparent to me. I'll go back to my first job in Nigeria. And one of the reasons I ended up becoming a CIQ certified coach is I remember, and, and this went over the few following years, um, we would have this conversation. I'd be working somewhere like Nigeria and I'd go to a rig and you could feel there was tension, there was all sorts of things, but the, uh, the concept was, well, this is what has to happen, so we're going to enforce these, this way of being, yeah? And, of course, when you do that, you're not going to get the buy-in that you need, yeah, to, to move the culture forward. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm, I'm going to share a screen. So one of the things that I did was with conversational intelligence was how can I use our conversational dashboard, but I reinterpreted a little bit using some emotional literacy work, um, an ontological work around moods framework, and then sort of combined a few things together. So I'm just gonna share an image. Mm -hmm. And so this is sort of my interpretation of it, uh, and which is in the book as well. And I kind of call it the mood dashboard. So when we start an engagement, uh, we talk to them and say, okay, so thinking about, because, you know, people don't come to a safety leadership program with their hands up going, woohoo, I've arrived here, right? <laughs> They're so not interested, generally speaking. <laughs> so I don't have, we don't often get the pleasure of working with an audience initially that's excited to be there. Right. So we need to sort of break the ice a little bit and we need to have a bit of a laugh and to just to get that rapport going in the beginning. And so one of the things I asked was, OK, you've just been invited to this program or voluntold to go to this program. Uh, where do you think you might sit? And I don't even explain it too much, actually. Most people will know what resentment means, what resignation means. Well, resignation we might need to explain, but resenting is, you know, do you feel a bit resentful that you're here, you're a bit angry, you're thinking about, you've got lots of other things to be doing. Why do I have to sit through another program, right? Uh, resignation is, oh, here we go again. I'm doing another one of these. Yeah, what am I going to learn this time? 
Um, or we've got some who are a little more curious and go, well, I've been there before, but I'm going to wait and see. This one might be better. And then, of course, we move to, okay, I'm going to be curious versus I'm all in, right? Yeah, so when we yeah. first do this test, if you like, this litmus test, and I often, well, used to, <laughs> now I use polls, but I used to do it on a flip chart with sticky notes. I would actually get people to come up and sticky tape themselves onto the mood dashboard. And it gave us a sense at the beginning of the workshop where people were, right? And then we could work with them and say, okay, so we're moving to here. And then through the course of the day, we'd say, okay, feel free to move your sticky wherever, wherever you'd like to, if you feel that you're moving across the dashboard. And so it was a, it's a really nice way of getting people engaged right from the beginning. So that's kind of how I use that dashboard to start with. So it is a reinterpretation, um, but it does work. So um, it's great. We stop. think we can all recognize these these moods. Eh? And uh, yeah, let's go into uh, with the question into the breakout rooms again now Sorry. and uh, for five yeah. minutes and uh, with a question. So so where you choose a team, yeah, uh, where there's a safety uh, discussion going on, and where would you yourself put you yourself in the model eh, of the mood uh, of the team at the moment, and what would you need? Yeah, to move the needle a little bit to the right side. Yeah, exactly. Well, where would you, yeah, so thinking about that. And, and I guess yeah. what I hadn't said yet is, you know, what's important here is that if you've got a room that is sitting in, in a space of a mood of resentment and resignation, you're not going to go, oh, raha, we're going to go and do this and play fun. You know, we need to get them there, you know, uh, take them on the journey. So, mm. okay. So where would you put yourself or your team on that dashboard at this moment? Yeah. So maybe think just, of an just organization to, or people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. To have it very clear, uh, Ken, so you, you ask the question to, to, to each individual here in the group where, where you as a leader, yeah, uh, how you would move the needle for the group. If, they, if they've got a group or yeah. think of a client where you've got yeah. that situation. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Can we do that? Five so minutes another... again. Yeah, which is all, already rubbing our hands. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I will send them back into their old rooms. And I think uh, Nuala was uh, kicked out of the meeting. So I will manually assign you to room three where you used to be before. OK, yeah. so five minutes from now, enjoy the conversations. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Every yeah. time you, uh, you, when I'm talking, uh, I'm interrupted by you. Yes, that is the system, <laughs> Pelan. That's the system. <laughs> I'm ruthless with that. I just oh, press the button. You are terrible. <laughs> and I'm sending you a heads up. So maybe you will have not seen that little note that says you have two more minutes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So but do you want to finish your story? <laughs> yeah, at least at least i always have the last words oh, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah some some communication pattern is becoming surface uh, surfacing here yeah? but please Pella, go ahead <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> so what what uh, what uh, were you talking about yeah we were talking summarize? about hidden hidden agendas <laughs> and transparency mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, i don't know uh, the name of uh, the person who was uh, uh, telling this uh, Karina Lynn oh yeah Lynn no, eh? yeah Lynn. Um, yeah and and honesty you and know, honesty that, exactly mm -hmm. yeah that, and, and, that and yeah sorry go ahead it it breaks your trust faster than anything if you find that somebody has been dishonest or has a different motivation for what they're doing than what is apparent, what you think they have. That, mm -hmm. I think that can hurt the psychological safety and mm -hmm. then the trust and it breaks trust. And it takes exactly. a while to rebuild because yeah. it requires so much um, more kind of backpedaling and explaining and then everything goes into question mm. and a exactly. lot of things from the yeah. past. Yeah. If there's time, I have a very nice example of that. Yeah. Share. 
Yeah, I, I, I have been working uh, in, in the aviation, as I told, and uh, we uh, worked with the safety management system. And, mm -hmm. uh, and there was a, a system where all more uh, like, uh, for example, um, uh, fatigue uh, risk management was also implemented in that and all course and trainings uh, were implemented in that. And um, we all thought as a pilot, I was a pilot there, that was very good and we, we we were well motivated to do the courses and the training and uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, then after time uh, after the couple of uh, years uh, oh. we uh, we figured out that that safety management system was there for klm to uh, uh, be able to let us work harder and uh, uh, according to regulations, uh, fly more hours without resting because they had that system. So it was, mm. they, it worked the other way around for us. We thought yeah. it was a good system for us to protect us, but on the other, but it was in fact it was the, the other way around. They they did it. Uh, they had the system so they could prove to the to the ICAO and the EASA that the uh, the very uh, high um, uh, the, 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 they make the regulations for the, uh, aviation to prove that they have kind of systems so they the pilots can fly longer now you maybe you feel uh, the trust yeah. in uh, in this yeah yeah, yeah. Karen does that uh, perhaps uh, you can uh, uh, speak your wise words into this uh, <laughs> safety pattern <laughs> and organizations well, I, I think i think that's you know when we get that that's that sort of proactive level where it's it's still focusing it's still good but it's not always 100 percent the best for the the people involved yeah so yeah. to that's just good. to um uh, i'll i'll share a little bit more about that model so i'm just going to how we're using it um so moving into talking a little bit more about trust and what we were talking about earlier about talking about trust as a risk assessment. So we know from our dashboard that if we're in that resentment resignation side of the dashboard, then we're in a position of low trust, which is very hard to move people forward. If we, know, we need to solve that first before we can move people along. If you're in the middle, you're a conditional, then of course, on the other side, you're moving into high trust. And this is where we're starting to work from that. And interesting, a company that I'm working with at the moment, we're talking about, I am safe, we are safer. And it's that's becoming their new mantra for now. And it's about how do we move? And I do use this a version of this with them. And how are we moving from that I to we um, uh, process? But we also talk about trust as that risk assessment, and it really is at the heart of everything that we do. If we don't trust something, if we don't trust a car, if we don't trust food, if we don't trust another person, um, it's because we're risk assessing what we're doing internally. We may not call it that, but in some ways that's what we're doing. So it really is about how well another or others are likely to take care of our concerns. And we you can use it as a litmus test as well. So we talk about sincerity, reliability, capacity, and or competence and capacity, sometimes use the same thing, um, and capability. So you might have somebody who are working with an environment where there's reliability, but is there sincerity? Is there the cap capability to do the work? Are the resources there? So we can use trust as that risk assessment. So we kind of encourage people to use it now a little bit more than just from a moral stance of, oh, they're a nice person, so I'll trust them. And where that really comes into play in the safety space is you might be working alongside somebody, the culture isn't really where it should be. You may not say something when they regularly are doing things that you know are not quite correct or could cause harm, but you don't want to interfere. Whereas now if I suddenly become their manager or something, I now have to get involved with that conversation. So all of a sudden that trust thing becomes a very different story now. Yeah. So that's really just to wrap up where that, you know, if we can move through the, 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 through how we move through the ladder, through the dashboard, using trust as a risk assessment, um, which all leads to how do we have rewarded vulnerability instead of punished vulnerability, and that will make for a safer world. Yeah. 
Wonderful mantra. Yeah. I am safe. We are safer. Love that. Yeah. Quite cool. Yeah. Okay. Quite good. Yeah. We uh, are uh, closing uh, the ending of this session. Are there any uh, words someone would like to share something important about uh, the topic uh, that uh, because, yeah, unfortunately, we can't hear all the voices in sh such a short time, please. I'm going to put my lovely quote into the chat because <laughs> I like mm -hmm. my quote. <laughs> yeah, there it is in the chat. Yeah. So there's a significant difference between someone believing safety is important and being a safety leader. Yeah, and here it goes. Yeah, and it all comes down to the conversation we have for building trust to pave the way for a safer world. A quote yeah. from Karin herself. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm. Team trust assessment and yeah, delivered one last night, fabulous. Yeah. Wonder. Yeah. The other one is also from you, Karen, the mantra, I am safe, we are safer, or? No, 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 that's the yeah. organization that we're working oh. with at the moment. We're Wonderful. doing a global yeah. safety culture yeah. leadership yeah. change program. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. And yeah. it's good, I like it. It works for them. Yeah. So, Flo okay. Thank you so much. Floor is open for some comments. Any comments? Thank Any you. Comments. That was fantastic. Thank Excellent. you. It was such a lovely reiteration and re review of the chapter. So thank you. Thank you. And, and wonderful breakout rooms and a great way to bring it back and, and share among everybody. So you really yeah. did this in a lovely fashion. Thank you for letting me be part of it. I'm glad to see all your happy faces. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So in the chat, you can see the website. Thank you, Ute, for that. Eh? Yeah. Uh, European Sea Collective. And on that website, there will be a recording yeah, of this uh, webinar as well. So you can uh, uh, review it. And also Karen's website, uh, Safety Collaborations, if you want some advice from her part. And also the book of, oh, everything is there. Book of Conversational Intelligence and some <laughs> remarks that we haven't read and that we will read if you save the chat. So yeah, and, and everyone will get all of these links and all of the information in the email that we are sending out as soon as the uh, recording is available. And I, I'm not sure if it's on the website, but it's definitely on the playlist of the YouTube channel that we have. And it's all in that email um, that you will be getting um, as soon as Christian is back from his vacation. So oh, yeah. Yeah, and speaking okay. of vacation is, is our key word because we are taking a summer break. Yeah? yeah, there won't be any regular stables in August and in September. So we will be back in October yeah. with um, Linda Keller. And you met Linda already um, as the host for Christian in the Agile Project Room. And um, so if you want to highlight the date in, in your calendar already without a link yet, it's on the 20th of October at the same time. Uh, we are trying to get the link for registration also into the email that you will be getting. So fingers crossed that um, everything will be ready on time and we will see you again in October. Yeah, thank you so much.